Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel HMPNs. I am Abhishek sir and today in this video we will study about another very important topic of 10th science light chapter that is refraction. Note that this is part 2 of the previous video. Let us quickly move on to the topic checklist. These topics will be studied in this chapter and in this video. So topics are refraction with examples, glass slab, laws of refraction, refractive index, lens and types, important definitions, rules and ray diagrams, uses of lenses, sign convention, lens formula and magnification and the last topic will be power of lens. Now friends in reflection we have seen that light ray was bouncing back in the same medium. It travels and bounce back after striking and it travel in the same medium. But have you ever imagined what happened when light enters from one transparent medium to another? Does it still move along a straight line path or change its direction? Now let us consider the case of the pencil or any spoon which is partly immersed in water. The light reaching you from the portion of the pencil inside the water seems to come from a different direction compared to the part which is above water. So that is the reason why the pencil appears to be displaced at the interface. You see there is a slight displacement of pencil. It appears little bit bent even if it is pencil or if it is spoon. In both the cases we are seeing that there is a bending. So what exactly is refraction? Refraction is the phenomena of bending of light when it travels from one medium to another. So change in direction or bending of light is nothing but refraction. Now quickly going to the next topic that is refraction by glass slab. Over here in this figure we can see a glass slab A, B, C, D, the rectangular glass slab. You see PQ is the incident ray. Then it went, then it goes inside the glass slab, so it becomes QR, and then it comes out of the glass slab, it becomes RS. So PQ is incident ray, QR is refracted ray, and RS is emergent ray. Now you see dotted lines N1, N2 is the first normal, N3, N4 is the second normal, and from Q to C, towards C, there is another dotted line that shows that if there wasn't any refraction, light would have traveled in that path. So you see there is a slight displacement from the original to the actual path. That displacement is called lateral displacement. Now see, uh, when the medium changes, there is a slight bending. So both these arrows are showing where the bending actually happened. Now important thing to know that if we replace the glass slab, with a triangular glass prism, the result would be the same. The light ray will bend. And a common pattern that is observed that if the light rays are moving from rarer to denser medium, it bends towards normal. And if it moves from denser to rarer, it moves away from the Now, as you are familiar with the phenomena of refraction of light, now let us know what is the cause of this refraction. Refraction is due to the change in the speed of light as the light ray enters from one transparent medium to another. What is the keyword? Speed changes when the light ray moves from one medium to another. Now experiments show that the refraction of light occurs according to certain laws. So these laws are called laws of refraction. The first law is the incident ray normal and the refracted ray all lie in the same plane. Second law is a very important statement also known as Snell's law. It says the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is constant and this constant is called refractive index. Now let us study refractive index in another way. Now or we all know that the value of refractive index of a given pair of medium depend on speed of light in them. So if we want to represent refractive index, if we want to find out the refractive index of medium, of any medium with respect to any other medium, we will have to take care of 
the speed or velocity of light in those medium so what we have to do we have to do the ratio suppose here v1 is velocity of light in medium 1 and v2 is velocity of light in medium 2 so what is refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 it is eta 2 1 equals to v1 upon v2 what is that small n it is not actually in english alphabet it is a symbol which is called eta now if we replace any one medium with vacuum so that becomes absolute refractive index so the refractive index of any transparent medium with respect to vacuum or even air that is called absolute refractive index so for example you can see in the figure uh, eta of glass so how to find out absolute refractive index of glass so you just have to divide the speed of light in vacuum upon speed of light in glass so that is how you find absolute refractive index now moving on to the next topic that is image formation by lens but before that let us study what is a lens and what are the various types of lens so what is lens a transparent medium bounded by two surfaces of which one or both the surface are spherical so based on that we divide lenses into two types that is concave lens and convex lens now see from the figure if it is thin at the center if there is a cave in the middle if it is thin at the center it is called concave lens if it is thick at the center it is called convex lens now in the bracket i have written few words converging and diverging so that we can understand by these two figures why it is called converging and diverging so in convex lens when light rays are coming from one side they converge to a single point and that is why it is also called converging lens but in concave lens the light rays from one side they will tend to move away they will tend to diverge away so that is why we have to bring them back to a point and that is why this lens is called diverging lens so convex lens converging lens concave lens diverging lens now these lenses have two surfaces which are curved so we have to imagine that both the curved surface forms a part of some imaginary sphere right see in the figure for both the surface in both the lenses we have an imaginary sphere so we have we have defined two definitions radius of curvature and center of curvature based on this figure now what is radius of curvature of these lenses it is the radius of spheres from which the curved surfaces of the lenses are formed what is center of curvature it is the center of the sphere of which the surface of lens forms a part so based on this imaginary spheres we are defining radius of curvature and center of curvature of lens moving on to the next set of definitions we have principal axis that will be almost similar to that of what we have seen in mirror in principal axis is an imaginary straight line passing through the centers of curvature of the lens so it is an imaginary line passing from the center what is optical center optical center is the central point of a lens on the principal axis remember uh, we have a similar concept of pole in the mirror so if it is lens then it is not pole it will be optical center next is the effective diameter of the circular outline of the lens which is called aperture so it is nothing but the diameter of the lens now the last definition is principal focus we have defined principal focus based on the nature of uh, light rays uh, into two one for convex lens and one for concave lens when rays parallel to principal axis are converging at a point after refraction so that point is called principal focus of convex lens so they are actually converging to the point so that point is called principal focus rays parallel to principal axis of concave lens are refracted such that they appear to be diverging from a point on principal axis that point is called principal focus of concave lens remember 
diverging lens concave lens is diverging lens so rays will not actually meet they appear to meet to a point and that point is called principal focus of concave lens. now next topic is ray diagrams uh, we can represent image formation by lenses using ray diagrams for drawing ray diagrams in lenses uh, just like spherical mirrors we consider any two of the light rays and then we see uh, the manner in which they are refracted so we have to follow certain rules before we go to actual image formation and ray diagrams the first rule is rays parallel to principal axis will pass through principal focus in case of convex lens and obviously it will appear to be coming from principal focus in case of concave lens the next rule says that rays passing through optical center it will emerge without deviation so without deviation it will pass through the optical center in a straight manner and the third rule is that rays passing through or directed to focus will emerge parallel to the principal axis so by these three rules we will be seeing the next topic that is ray diagrams in also the, this topic we will discuss how the image formation is there by convex lens and then uh, two of the examples of concave lens image formation also we will be seeing uh, note that in ray diagrams focus on the figure and four things you have to take care position of object position of image nature of image and size so it's quickly starting with the first one if the object is at infinity the image will be formed at f2 nature real and inverted and as image is very small very very small it is not seen so it is highly diminished moving on to the next set of figure that is if the object is beyond 2f1 the image will be formed on the other side between f2 and 2f2 nature again the rays are actually meeting so it is real and inverted and as compared to the object the image is slightly smaller so it is diminished now the third figure if the object is at 2f1 what will happen the light rays will refract and converge and meet to the other side exactly at 2f2 you can see from the figure nature is really inverted and again comparing the sizes the size of image and object both are same now moving on to the next figure if the object is placed between 2f1 and f1 the position of image will be beyond 2f2 on the other side nature real and inverted and size is magnified that is larger than the object moving on to the next figure if the object is at f what will be the position of image you see these two ray they are not coming close neither going away so they will move till infinity and we will have to assume that they will meet at some point in infinity and a real and inverted and magnified image will be formed moving on to the next part that is if we keep the position of object between f1 and o the position of image will be on the same side of the object it will be virtual and erect and the red line and black line you compare so the image will be magnified as compared to the object so it will be having a larger uh, size moving on to the next one now we have concave lens in concave lens we will see two different cases if the object is at infinity the light rays are coming and diverging so if we bring them back they will combine at f1 on the same side so if we are elongating the light rays back side so that is why nature is virtual and erect and size as you can see we cannot see the image properly so it is highly diminished moving on to the last one and that is if we keep the object between infinity and optical center of the lens what will happen image will be formed again on the same side it will be formed between f1 and o and if uh, we see the image very small tiny image you can see 
again it is virtual and erect and it is diminished that means smaller than the object so here we complete the ray diagrams moving on to the next topic that is uses of lenses we'll see uses of both the kind of lenses convex lens is used in magnifying glass and microscope concave lens on the other hand it is used in flashlight and spy hole indoors you cannot see this uh, commonly in India, but in foreign countries, they are keeping spy holes indoors for their security. Moving on to the next point that is sign convention for lens. Uh, you can see this pattern is repeated. We are following the same uh, set of rules that we have followed for mirror. Uh, here, optical center is considered as the origin and if you move towards left side it the distance measured will be negative if you move towards right side distance measure will be positive perpendicularly above is positive and perpendicularly down side it is taken negative uh, friends especially we have to take care of these sign convention when you are solving numericals moving on to the next topic that is lens formula again uh, we are seeing similar concept as that we have seen in mirror. What is lens formula? Uh, it is the equation which gives relation between object distance u, image distance v and focal length f of a lens. So this formula, this equation is called lens formula. Moving on to magnification. Again, magnification is the ratio of image height to object height. So it is expressed as h dash upon h. Also, it can be expressed as image ratio of image distance to object distance. So magnification is denoted by small m. So we can write small m equals to h dash upon h and small m is also equals to v upon u. Note that again we have to follow Cartesian sign convention if we are finding magnification. Moving on to the last topic that is power of lens. What is power of lens? It is the ability of a lens to converge or diverge light rays. So everything depends on focal length. If the focal length is changed, the ability of lens to converge or diverge the light rays will also change. Technically, if we define power of lens, it is the reciprocal of the focal length of the lens power of lens is denoted by p so we can write p equals to 1 upon f we have to take care of some points that is power of lens is measured by a special unit that is diopter and for finding power in diopter we have to take care that focal length must be in meters so standard unit for power of lens is diopter Instrument used to measure the power of any lens is diopterometer. So unit and the instrument both are starting with the same names. So that is why it is easy to remember. Uh, one thing we have to keep in mind that power of convex lens is positive and power of concave lens is negative. This will help uh, when you will solve numerical related to power. Right. So that is uh, all about refraction. We have completed reflection in the previous video. In this video, we have completed refraction as well. So thank you students and stay updated for the next set of videos in which we will study another topics of